Welcome back. In this video, we're going to create our first Git repository. But before we do that, let me um, introduce a little bit of terminology and just sort of give you a glimpse into how Git sees the world. Okay. Um, so there is, from Git's viewpoint, there is your working directory and sort of whatever folder that you're working in that you want Git to version control for you. That's sort of where you work is in your working directory. There's the actual repository, which is just a graphical database. And we'll, I'll teach you a little bit about what I mean by that a little bit later. So the actual repository or database is um, the actual information that um, Git is keeping for you. Okay, so that's, this is really, um, uh, sort of innards of Git here, and this is where you're working. In between those two is what's called the staging area or the index, okay? So this is where your files are. This is the information that Git has in its database, and there's this sort of middle ground in between those two called the staging area. I'll be referring to these um, as we go, so I just wanted to point these out before we got started. Okay. So let's make our first repository. So I am currently in my, so if I print my working directory, I'm currently in my home folder. That's where I'm gonna do this. If you wanna do it elsewhere, just navigate there um, and you can do this anywhere on your computer. Okay, so once you get to where you want to um, do this, I mean, we're not doing anything important. This is stuff you can delete uh, when you're done. Um, so in my home folder, I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder called git intro. I'm gonna go into that folder, cd, change directory into it. And then I'm gonna make a directory within that folder called first git repo. Okay. And the names of these folders are, aren't important. Uh, so you can actually call them whatever you want, but this is, um, these are the folder names that I'm using. Okay, so now I am in my home folder in git intro first git repo. Okay. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create um, um, my a repository in this directory. Okay. So I'm just going to do ls to list the contents of this directory. There's nothing there, right? And I'm going to do git init. So that stands for to initialize this uh, directory as a repository, a git repository. Okay, so you should get something that says initializing empty git repository. And now if we do list the contents, oh, what? It's still empty. Well, that's because um, the actual repository, the database is sort of hidden from us. Okay, so if we do um, git, i sorry, if we do ls uh, dash a, now we'll see that there's a hidden folder in this directory called dot, uh, that's, that has a name dot git. This is the actual database. Um, and it's hidden from us because we don't actually want to tinker with that. That is sort of the content that git is keeping for us. And we don't want to work directly with that. Okay. Uh, if you want, you can just peek in there and there's some stuff in there. Uh, it's, it's all the stuff that Git needs to um, version control the contents of this folder. But we actually don't need to really know anything about what's happening in there. Um, that's sort of Git's, that's what Git is, uh, that's it, Git, it's Git's job to do that for us. Okay, so all, for all intents and purposes, it's still just an empty directory from our point of view. Um, but it is that um, dot Git directory is sort of where all the magic's happening. That is where the actual database uh, is, is kept. There's not much in it right now because we haven't ha actually added any content yet, but it's there. Okay. The next command that I want to show you is git um, status um, or status. I, I tend to flip back and forth between those somewhat um, randomly. I don't know why, but I do. Um, and that is just, it's a very useful command because it lets you see the world through Git's eyes. You're basically saying, okay, Git, 
what do you think about the current state of affairs? And it's going to report back um, what it thinks. And so it's saying on, mas on branch master. So we haven't talked about what branches are yet, but we'll get there. Not important right now. It says no commits yet. That makes sense. We haven't done anything yet. And there's nothing to commit. Okay. So get status is something that we're going to be using quite a bit. All right. Um, yeah. So it's very useful. It lets us uh, see the world through um, from Git's viewpoint. Okay. So now let's actually create some content. So I'm going to um, create a file dummy.txt by just echoing some content and redirecting it into that folder. So if you're relatively new to the command line, echo is just, does exactly what it says. It echoes whatever you give it to the standard output. But we're gonna redirect that output into a text file, dummy.txt. Okay, and I'm just gonna do that a couple more times. So this is a second line. Don't worry exactly about um, what you're actually typing here. You just want to create some content in a file. This is line three. All right. So now if I, if I sort of print the contents of that file, I'll see that it now has some stuff in it. It's got three lines of text. Okay. So now we have a file in our folder. So what we're going to do is before we do anything with Git, let's just see what Git sees. Let's use Git status again. Okay, so it's changed a little bit, right? It still says on branch master. We don't know what that means yet. No commits yet, but it does say there's an untracked file, dummy.txt. So it recognizes that there's this new file in there, but it's saying it's untracked. So Git is not um, version controlling this file yet. It's not tracking its contents. Okay, so let's change that. We are now going to um, stage dummy.txt for the next commit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and enter this, and then I'll talk a little bit about what is happening. So we're gonna do git add dummy.txt. Okay. I'm gonna flip over here quickly. And what do I mean by let me come back? Um, what do I mean by what what we're staging dummy.txt for the next commit. What do I mean by that? Okay, so dummy.txt a, is a file in our working directory, okay? By doing git add, we're saying put the contents of this file into the staging area, okay? And this staging area is where content resides that is going to go into the database the next time we um, commit content to the database. Okay, so what we did by doing git add dummy.txt is we put the contents of dummy.txt into this staging area. Okay, so let's go ahead and do git status again, see what uh, git thinks about things. So on, on uh, branch master, no commits yet, but now it says there are changes to be committed. So it's no longer an untracked file. It's saying there's a new file, dummy.txt, and this is ready to be committed to the database, okay? And you also note that Git, all, I've kind of been skipping over this, but Git often has useful um, messages about things that you might wanna do. Um, Git's actually very helpful in giving you suggestions on what you might wanna do next. So if you made a mistake and you didn't actually want to stage the content of this file for the next commit to the database, it shows you, hey, if this was not what you intended, this is the command you use to fix it. Git rm dash dash cache and, and, the file, and the file name, and that will fix this for you. Okay, so Git um, is also often giving you suggestions that can be helpful. So it's, it's good to get in the habit of actually reading the stuff that Git is, is telling you. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we now have the contents of dummy.txt those three lines of text that we wrote into this file is now in the staging area. And now we're gonna use the command git commit to actually um, put it in the database, the actual repository, okay? Um, once we do that, this is basically there forever. Git is very 
Um, Git is very good at keeping information. It's very hard to, to get Git to forget things, okay? So it's, it's pretty permanent once we commit it there, but we can always obviously make changes moving forward. Okay, so there's two ways that we can do this. So when we commit something to the actual repository, to the database, um, Git requires us to give us, to accompany that commit with a message, okay? We have to give it some information about what we're committing and why, and Git won't let us commit um, new content without providing some information, okay? So you can provide that message that goes along with your commit by doing git commit dash m and then giving a short message about you know what are you committing and why. But I'm going to recommend that you just simply enter git commit. Okay. And the reason for that is when we do it this way, git is going to open a text editor for us to provide the, the message that goes along with our commit, okay? So if I just do git commit, it's gonna open a text editor. For me, it's opening it in Vim. Um, if you configured it for Nano, it's gonna open it in Nano. And it's basically just saying, okay, you're committing new stuff to the database. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing, okay? And so it gives you a place to start typing up here. Um, and then it's got some information for you, but you notice that there's a, a hash sign or a dollar sign, I mean, um, a number sign in front of all of these lines. Those are comments. So when you actually save and uh, this, when you actually save your message, this stuff won't actually be included. Okay, these are, these are comments that will be ignored. Okay, so a quick note about sort of best practices for writing a message that accompanies your commit. So commit message best practices. So what you wanna do is basically give your um, commit a short title. So it's just a very brief summary of what you're committing, the changes that you've made, okay? You want, you want this to be like a one line sort of short title for your commit. And then you wanna skip a line and then write a longer explanation of the changes that, you, that you've made and why, give some context. Um, and trust me, by getting in the habit of doing this, writing good messages with your commits, you will thank yourself later. Because the worst collaborator you will ever work with is you from six months ago. Because <laughs> if, if you don't get in the habit of a good uh, writing good commit messages and you have to look back at some commits that you made six months ago, you're going to be really mad at yourself that you didn't provide more information about what you did and why. You're like, well, what was I doing? I don't remember. I don't remember writing this commit. I, I don't know what I was doing. So just Trust me, you will thank yourself if you can force yourself to get into the habit of writing informative uh, messages with your commits. Um, definitely try to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to show an example over here. So um, I'm adding um, dummy.txt and um, writing a long commit message to teach uh, best practices to students. <laughs> so obviously I'm committing a bogus file here, so I don't really have that much information to provide here, but I'm just showing you an example of, of writing just sort of a short uh, summary that just fits on one line um, and then uh, skipping a line and providing, and you can, this commit, me commit message can be as long as you want, right? I could write three, four paragraphs here if it was necessary, or lots of times it can be relatively short, okay? And then what's going to happen is when we save and, and exit uh, the text editor, so if you're using Nano, you're going you're to do like uh, Control-O 
and then control X um, to save and then exit the text editor. It's going to finish the commit. So the commit was sort of half, half finished. It started the commit, but it said, hey, you got to give me some, a message first. When we type that message into the text editor and save it and quit, um, uh, the commit is completed. Okay. If we didn't, if we didn't type something, uh, commit, uh, sorry, Git would actually abort the commit. Okay. So we have to provide a message with our commit, either by doing this or doing this. Okay. So I just told you that this is the way to do it. You want to get in the habit of doing git commit because it sort of forces you to write good commit messages. But today I'm going to violate that. I'm going to be using this a lot just because it's faster. Um, and so we're going to be kind of playing around with commits, um, sort of just committing trivial information. And so I'm just going to use this so we can move along more quickly. Um, but so don't do, do as I say, not as I do. So it, you can really help yourself. That you can, the, the you from six months from now will definitely thank you if you get in the habit of doing this instead of doing this, okay? But today I'll be doing a lot of this just to make things move along a little faster. Okay, so after running commit and writing our message, we get output that looks something like this. So, Gets telling us it's adding dummy.txt. There's one file changed with three insertions. Um, yeah, so our commit was our commit to the database was successful. Okay. Okay, so now if you do git status, it'll say something like on branch master. We don't know what that means yet, but that's okay. We'll get there. Nothing to commit, working tree is clean. Okay, so what does that mean? What nothing to commit. What that means is that um, all, all of these things match. So uh, the, the database um, and the working directory are exactly the same, right? There's no differences between these and there's nothing in the staging area. That's what it means by saying there's nothing to commit. So there's nothing in the staging area to commit and the working tree is clean. That's just saying that your working directory is exactly the same as the database. That's what that message means. Okay. Yeah. So that's just what I that's what I just said. Working directory matches the current snapshot. So yeah, I, I didn't introduce the, the term snapshot yet, but when you're um, those are sort of two words that are used um, to talk about um, commits, is that you can talk about a commit or you can talk about a snapshot. Um, so um, a commit in Git is sort of a full snapshot of, of, this, of, of everything that's in this folder or this directory that we are tracking, okay? Um, there are other version control tools that will only sort of store changes in the database rather than sort of a full snapshot of the current state of all the content in the folder. Git doesn't do that. It actually does store a full sort of all the information content as it currently is in the working directory that's being tracked is in the, is in a commit. So that's why we call it a snapshot. So you think of it as taking a picture of everything um, as it is in your working directory that is stored in the database. <clears throat> okay, and nothing is in the staging area. All right, the next command that we're gonna learn is git log. What this does is it's gonna show you every commit from where you are currently all the way back to your very first commit, um, all the way back to the root of, of your project. And so this is really useful because this is really gonna be your lab notebook. If you are, um, are using Git for your research, this is your lab notebook. So if, you, if you've done sort of wet lab work where you've actually worked in a lab and you've kept um, an actual written notebook, this is the analog to that um, um, for sort of the computational side of things. And Git log is gonna show you your lab notebook. 
And that's why it's really good to write good commit messages because um, this is your lab notebook, okay? So let's take a little bit, of, um, a little bit, let's look at this a little bit more. So it's, you can see that it's got a commit um, number of sorts. It's got a commit identifier. I'm gonna talk more about that in just a second, what that is. <clears throat> it looks really ugly, but I'll, it's actually a beautiful thing. Um, it's gonna have who you are, the time that the commit um, was made to the database. Um, and it's got your, your, the message that you wrote, the message that accompanied the commit. Okay, so back to this, um, I'll show it over here. What is this big ugly thing? So why isn't it just commit one, right? And then the next commit would be commit two. So other version control tools um, that were predecessors to Git try to do things like that. But it gets tricky when you have a bunch of collaborators that are working on um, a project at the same time, trying to figure out a way how to number those in a way that's sort of predictable and makes sense is actually really difficult. So what Git did is said, forget that. Like we, we're not going to try to sequentially number the commit. We're actually going to use, take a different approach. And what's really nice about this is it actually sort of gets two birds with one stone. Okay. So what this is, is it's the output of a secure hash algorithm or a SHA for short, S-H-A. And what that is, is that, that's the output of a cryptographic function. So what it's doing is it's taking the information in the snapshot that you're committing, it's feeding all of that information along with your commit message and who you are in the time. It's taking all of that information and feeding it through a cryptographic um, hash function. And it's spitting out this string of numbers and letters <clears throat> that is unique to that content, okay? So what that does is it guarantees that every single commit will have a unique identifier. So you never get clashes. Like if you tried to number them one, two, three, four, and you had two people sort of doing things at the same time, you're never gonna get that clash because this will be unique to every commit. So that's good. And it's also very useful because it sort of, um, it secures the integrity of our data. So the, all of the content of our repository is encapsulated in this commit identifier, okay? So if anything got corrupted or changed, you know, if we come back 20 years from now and we've transferred this Git repository across five different hard drives, if anything, if any, a single um, byte of data got corrupted along the way, Git will know about it um, because of the fact that it's using these SHAs to represent the identifiers of these commits. So it's actually a very beautiful thing that it looks really ugly, um, but they're guaranteed to be unique and they will, they're guaranteed to sort of protect our data. If anything happens to our data, that if it's corrupted in any way, we'll know it, Git will know it, <clears throat> and we'll be able to recover our data. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so just kind of a review, a recap of what we've covered so far. So the basic workflow here that you've been introduced to is you edit files in your working directory. So that's sort of just the, the work you're doing normally if you weren't using Git. Um, you stage uh, changes that you're making to your files using Git add. You can review at any time. You can always use Git status to review what's going on. Um, and then you're gonna commit those changes. Okay, so that's the basic workflow. You work, you add, uh, some of your changes to the staging area, and you can review that if you need to, and then you commit it to the database. Okay, so let's, let's play around a little bit more. So let's add, uh, update some content. 
So I am going to um, type, type another, add another line to dummy.txt. So I'm just echoing a, some, a string and redirecting that to dummy.txt. One thing you'll notice is there's, there's two greater than sign symbols here. That's important because if you only use one, you're going to overwrite dummy.txt. And the first three lines will disappear. Um, so the double greater than symbol is still redirection, but it's saying append rather than write to the file, append to the file. So it won't overwrite what's already there. So I, I'm just going to use cat quickly just to show you that, yes, indeed, um, dummy.txt now has another line. Okay, so let's see what, what git thinks. Let's run into git status. Okay, so it says on master branch, uh, changes um, not staged for commit. So there's nothing state, nothing in the staging area yet, but it's recognizing that dummy.txt has been modified. Okay. So there's nothing to commit yet because like I said, we've changed things here, but this is where things need to be before they're committed. So it's saying there's nothing to commit yet because there's nothing in the staging area, but it recognizes that there's been changes up here. Okay. Okay. Um, another useful um, git command is diff. So if you do git diff, what it's going to show you is what's the difference between the working directory and the staging area. Okay. And it's showing that we have added a new line. So that can be very useful if you want to sort of look at the changes you've made just to verify that, yeah, that it matches what you think it should. <clears throat> so git diff can be very useful. All right, so yes, git diff shows you the differences between your working directory and the staging area. Okay, so now we're gonna do git add dummy.txt. And you might be thinking, wait a second, we already added dummy.txt. Why are we doing that again? So the reason we're doing that again is because we're adding new content to the staging area. There's a new line in this file and we have to add that new content to the staging area. So git add isn't about adding files, it's about adding content. So there's new content in that file and that's what we're adding to the staging area. So, so the say, what Git does is it tracks content, not files per se, okay? So that's why we're using add again. We're adding that new content that was in this file to the staging area, okay? So now we can do git status and it confirms that um, we have modified dummy.txt and it's, it's ready to be committed, right? So this is now in the staging area so the next time we do git commit, it will get um, entered into the database, into the repository. Okay, so if we do git diff, hmm, wait, it's saying dummy.txt is modified, but git diff isn't showing anything. What's going on? Well, I just told you that git diff is showing you the difference between the working directory and the staging area. But when we did git add, we moved that new content from the working directory to the staging area. So now these two are the same. So there is no difference between them, okay? But if we do git diff staged, we'll see that difference again. And so what this option is doing, dash dash staged, that's showing us the difference between the staging area and the database, okay? So if we do git diff, it's showing us differences between the working directory and the staging area. If we do git diff staged, it's showing us the differences, the differences between the staging area and the database and the repository itself, okay? So that's the difference. Okay, so that's what I, just told you. So stage is, is showing you that difference between the state. And that can be very useful because if you're about to commit and you just want to 
double check, okay, what am I committing exactly? You can enter this and it will show you exactly the, the, the new stuff that you're about to, to, to commit to the database. Okay, so let's go ahead and do commit. We're going to commit this. Um, I'm going to use that dash M option um, just to speed things up a little bit. But like I said, I'm just using that here because we want to keep things moving along. I really recommend that you don't do this. Uh, practice not doing this so that you write good. You're, you're more likely to write a better commit message if you're writing in a text editor rather than writing at the command line. Okay, so I'm just gonna write a quick commit, a very terrible commit message here. Um, so that's something you don't wanna do, but just to keep things moving along, that's what I'll be doing today. Okay, so I've had to get status now, it's saying, okay, there's nothing to commit and the working tree is clean. So once again, what that's telling us is, um, there's nothing new in the staging area and the database and the working directory are, are identical. There's just, there's, there's no differences there. So everything looks clean from uh, Git's point of view. <clears throat> and we can also do, do you know, git diff again and git diff staged again. And neither of those are gonna show any output because there are no differences between uh, the working directory so this is showing us there's no differences between the working directory and the staging area. This is showing us there's no differences between the staging area and the database. Okay, so once again, just to kind of recap, you know, we're starting to see that there's a basic workflow that you use when you're using Git. That's your, you, you do your work, you work, you edit your files, you stage the changes that you're making with Git add. You can review those changes with uh, if, if you need to with, with commands like git status and git diff and git diff staged. And then when you're ready, you go ahead and commit those changes to the database. Okay. And that is the basic workflow. All right, we're gonna end this video. In the next video, we'll start um, learning about what branches are um, and how we can use them to learn a little bit about how, what git is actually doing for us behind the scenes.